Here we go. We're back. We're live. Dude, I'm excited about the Wailopo event this week. Christopher, you're going to be there? I am. I'm uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on a panel. Uh, I think Barry and G are uh, moderating, so I'm pretty excited for that. And then just to, just to learn a lot. I know there's a lot of speakers going to be there. Nice, dude. I can't wait to, to be there. Should be fun. You guys out there? We. I'm only me this time, but I know Howard wanted to have Mark and Zach on a panel, but we couldn't get it all together. So they're going to be on next one. So, nice. so uh, yeah, this is my first Y Lobo event. We were supposed to go in 2020, but then it got canceled due to the pandemic. So this yeah. is uh, my first one, but it looks like it's packed full of content. So I'm really excited. A thousand plus people. We've got Tom Ferry there. Should nice. Be fun. Should be fun. It should be fun. I'll be there on Thursday if you're there, buddy. Just Thursday. Yeah, I will. I fly in. Uh, we're leaving tonight and then uh, I'll be there all week. Nice. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on the webinar side, Christopher. You always bring some amazing knowledge, processes, systems, things that we can integrate. And today we're going to be talking about stages, deal stages, and communication stages. Now, I know that some people get them confused. Some people don't even know there are stages. So let's start with the basics first and then tell us how you use it. So what are stages? Yeah. So just to start, uh, big shout out to FUB for they always listen. I just want to say that. Like, New ideas always get implemented, which is really cool to see Dan and the team. i uh, just saying, Dan, I feel like it's a disservice to the whole team of people over there that uh, really, 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 they sprint fast at developments and, and changes. So deals is something I was begging for for a long time. So yeah, starting with stages, what are stages? Stages are how you label your people, whatever CRM you're using, specifically above your, your communication stages. Uh, the system we were in before you know, it was like hot, warm, cold, archive, whatever it's going to be. But it's how you label your database to know who's who effectively. And I, what I love about FUB is you can customize what those are and what you call those. You can call them, you know, different vegetable names if you want to, or you can call them hot, <laughs> warm, cold. You really call them whatever you want. Um, but what I think that really adds is a, a level of customization that way, because we all know, right? Like, Real estate's fragmented. The way I do real estate here in San Diego is nothing like what my team did in Chicago uh, with a completely different game plan. Now Mm -hmm. in Chicago, when we worked expired, canceled FISBOs, if someone was a C cold nurture for nine months, let's be real, you're going to either relist or you're not listing at that that type of market. We weren't really following up with people that long term. It wasn't the strategy. Uh, It didn't make sense for what we were doing. So here, where we're, we're doing a heavy buyer leads focus and we're, we're doing a large database because Kyle and Brian and the team are so good at marketing and marketing our brand specifically, that our play is really how do we add as many people, regardless of how ready they are to transact, to know our business, like our business, realize that we are the guide to this process. And so now the nurturing game of the ISA department is way more of a focus here, where my ISA department in Chicago was way heavy on sales scripts, conversion dialogue, and a lot of that. So I love with just plugging pub there that the stages are customizable because if I was in a different market doing a different style of business, my strategy for those stage names and how we follow up would be vastly different. So I just want to say that going in because I'm going to have some strong opinions on stages as we go throughout today. Um, so yeah, that's stages and it's kind of a it's starting there. And what I really want to com- encompass with you guys today is like, I think with FUB, there's three main focuses that at least we have on our team that I think is common through all teams. It's we got to qualify leads. People come into the system and we have to know, are we going to follow up with them? Are they real contact info? Who are they? So first and foremost is we have an activity and an exercise we go through. And that's for us in our segments, in our stages is lead. Lead means we don't know. It's just a lead. It's raw data. It could be bad data. It could be good data. They could have motivation. They might not. We need to have a conversation. We need to know when or why or both. Pretty simple there. The second thing that we do in the CRM is we need to follow up with the people that we do know that are not just a lead, but they have a timeline. They're a real person, they're a family. We need to follow up to set an appointment. Now, I know from coming from inside sales and especially outside sales, we all want the first call to an appointment. We want that flex lead style of live transfer, go to it. We're on the appointment. Now we're good. But that's not really how it works. Like unless you have a flex account or you have an ISA department as an agent, you're really not going from first time conversation to appointment 99% of the time. Right. Most of the time you're following up if you're good at what you do for a long, long time or two months, maybe it's two weeks, but you're following up to get permission to have that appointment 
to where you're going to transact. So for us, that second tier is following up with people that we know are bona fide leads to set an appointment to get to that first meeting. Mm -hmm. The third activity we're doing in our CRM is we're following up to close the business. So these are people we've met with already. We've sat down. We know their timeline. We've had conversations. We've maybe went on showings before. We've got pre-approved. We've done an activity further down the funnel than just setting that first appointment. We've met belly to belly. And now we're following up to close the business, especially in this market. I don't know about up there in LA, uh, Tristan, but here we have no inventory. I think that's nationally a thing. Uh, or we do have a goods inventory, but it sells like that and there's nothing. So a lot of these people, we need a lot more follow-up now after that first showing to make sure that we're sending them new properties that come to the market uh, besides just the IDX that YLOPO does. Or, hey, here's our Raven off-market properties this week. We have to do something consistently add value. So we need to triage that group differently. So I say all three of those things say because stages are the spinal cord of that entire thing. If they're this stage, we do this. We know where they're at. What I really want to come and talk to you guys about though specifically is, okay, well, what if we've met? How do we follow up? I see a lot of people, I think what's so dynamic about FUB is you can have two different sets of stages. You can have deal stages and you can have communication stages. And I think that's the single most unique thing about FUB that no other CRM provides. Most of them work like Zillow. If you guys are familiar with Zillow's CRM, it's like, is this person connected? Have we met a set an appointment yet? Have we met an appointment? Have we signed a deal? Have we pending? That's very transactional, but I can have a met appointment with someone that I never want to talk to again. And they just not a good fit for my company. They're maybe a client I wouldn't take on, or maybe they have no motivation, whatever it is. But I also have someone I just met that maybe I need to follow up once a week for the next two months to make sure I earn their business. Mm -hmm. So just saying we've met and that's how I'm going to follow up. You just uprooted your whole communication stages because that's just not a communication stage. That's mm -hmm. a tracking metric. And mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people get into this path of where they'll make their communication stages transactional and you literally just water down the entire product of what follow-up boss is by doing that. And I, I think there's a lot of people that are doing that. So that's overview of really what I want to cover with you guys today is differentiating those two axes of here's communication, here's transactional. And how do we intersect the two to layer them over to then really prescribe strong follow-up? Strong follow-up, if I've met you and you're a hot I'm going to follow up with a different content strategy than if you're just hot, but we've never met before. Because my, my end zone, my goal for never met before is to get to that first meeting. That's my next mile marker I want to hit. Now, mile marker for appointment set met and transact sometimes will happen all really close. But we, we all know most times it's not. It's that meeting and then it's a long term wait and then we got to do follow up again. So, yeah, that's what I want to talk about today, guys. All right, man. Well, where do we start with this? Yeah, uh, let's go over our stages. I'll show you those. And then uh, kind of we always kind of get into it. We talk and uh, it'll probably uh, bring out new ideas. Good here. things happen when we talk. You know? <laughs> let me pull our phone. Boom. So let me just start with our stages and what they are. I think that's kind of a good uh, entry point here. So like I said, lead for us. And I can share this document if you guys want it afterwards. And I take no credit to these stages. I just uh, spoke with the FUB event at the Mastermind event. These are Barry's stages, Barry Jenkins stages. We have not reinvented the wheel. I think he's actually revamped his since we came onto the FUB platform, but we literally took it out of the boxes of what it was, and that's what we've rolled with. So for us, lead means we've never talked to them before. We don't know when or why. They're just raw data, like I said. From there, we instruct our salespeople to get into a conversation, get into a dialogue. After that call, 100% of the time, whether it was flex, whether it was uh, uh, YLOPO, you know, PPC lead, doesn't matter. You're always supposed to, after first conversation, have moved to this. Unless it's a first call where it's like, hey, I'm at the grocery store right now. Let's talk again. Okay, that's still a lead. We don't know anything about that person besides it's good contact info. But yep. every other conversation, you're really developing when or why so we can prescribe the best follow-up plan for them. So for us, hot 90 days, that just means for us, we need to talk to this person once a week. Can you make oh, yeah. this a little bit bigger? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, buddy. How's that? It's looking sexy. There we are. And yep, yeah, yeah. you can get a copy. Uh, what we'll do is, Chris, if you could put it into the follow-up boss community after, that yep. way people can jump in there and, and grab it. Absolutely. I'll put this and a couple other things in there. Uh, so yeah, Excellent. a hop for us, 90 days. I didn't put it on this one, but for us, that means you need to talk to this person once a week. Uh, that's how we're going to follow up within our segments. Um I'll go to B and then I'll come back to active shopping here. 
be warm just means their timeline is in the next three to six months. I think Barry does a really good job explaining this. And I, I like the flexibility. That's why we kept it is you might call it a B lead. I know some, you know, brokerages and teams do that. You might say, hey, this is warm. You might say this is their actual timeline. We really don't care where I really boil these three specifically down to a hot, be warm and see cold. To me, that really means how often do I need to follow up to have success? There's some high maintenance clients and some of our luxury you know, clients that need a little bit more handholding that they might truly be a be warm and timeline, but they need a hot service and weekly conversations. So I really, I don't want to get too pigeonholed to the time frame. What I really teach our salespeople is that this is a flexible label to say how often at bare minimum do I need to communicate and stay in front of this person to offer good service to make sure that we either set the appointment or transact. And that's, that's case by case. That's a conversation that's going to really help you discover what that is. So for us, this is going to be for be warm every three weeks and then cold or quarterly. So if you have someone, maybe you just qualify that's further out, a lot of our ISAs will actually mark them for the first month, be warm, even though they are cold, just because they might've got an initial, Hey, I'm farther out than I really am. And they don't want to wait a whole nine or three months till they talk again. So they might shorten that so they can do automated follow-up. Archive for us means it's valuable contact information, but there's no intent. And we really, with a lot, I think we've talked to another calls, Tristan, before, if we give people an out right away. We did a texting uh, one, I remember. And one of our first texts is giving people an out right out at the beginning is, hey, are you just looking for fun? Or are you looking for, you know, something right now? Yeah. Oh, we're just looking for fun. We'll go another level deep. But if they're like, hey, we're truly just browsing, presuming, and we're on the IDX site all the time just because we like looking at houses, we're not going to prohibit them. And we're also not going to trash them. We're going to put them in an archive, which is really our big remarketing database that we, we use that in a different way to try to drum up new opportunities in our pond and things like that. Trash is no valid contact info. And Sphere won't really go into a lot. Sphere is how we basically identify people that don't need to be, they're not a lead, they're Sphere. So this is our personal database. We treat these, now Sphere will go to lead or hot once it's transactional. So Sphere is just for us a hidden stage to hide people from our segments. Biggest ones though here is then active. This is what we started using, which is hotter than hot. Basically this means they're in the car. We have a signed listing agreement. We have a VIP to work with them as a buyer, but these people are a very targeted list. They're all met people that we've had an appointment with that we're really looking to send properties and do the extra mile with them. So that's our stages. Any questions on that? I think it's pretty straightforward. No, man, that's pretty easy, Mark. This is great. This is great. We're good, so buddy. Segments, I think we're all familiar. I'll take a 10 second journey down segments real quick. I love that FUB added these, uh, this blur option. I don't know if you guys saw that. So uh, we can share for those screen. for those people that don't know how to do that. Can you go through? Yeah, the process if it's in your account, that? you just go to power ups and then you can put blur mode on right here and just turn that little switch there. And then we can kind of share for trainings or whatever else. So none of the valuable contact info is uh, huh. shown. Yes. So it makes me a lot safer going in here. So our segments, <laughs> like I said, they're the basic ones out of the box. Uh, and it's all predicated around the state. So stage includes lead. Stage includes lead. So all of our segments are based off of what was the stage. So these first three are, like I said, that first group, qualifying leads. So segments one, two, and three, their purpose is to qualify leads. Mm -hmm. Four is our YLOPO list of anyone that we have qualified, whether we've had an appointment or whatever, we just need to follow up because they've done a hand raiser activity and we need to make sure that we're servicing and triaging this list. But again, this is based off of stages hot, warm, cold. These are qualified stages follow-up list. And then five, six, and seven are prescribed follow-up as I call them, meaning the stage is hot. We need to follow up once a week, every six days. Six, it's warm only, and we need to follow up less than 30 days. And then cold, more than 90 days. So I say this, I went to the segments. I really don't want to spend a lot of time in segments today, but the reason I brought it into segments is stages here on your left side of the show for everyone knows this right here, this should dictate how frequently you follow up. That's the real purpose. It's not an identifier. It's not a label. It's not a tag. It no, is a, what yeah. input should I put in here to make sure my automated follow-up, as I call it, clearing my segments every day. I don't have to think about what I have to do to start my follow-up. All right. So you were going through, there's your ABC and archive. Yeah. Martin, we got you. Don't worry. And you'll see this pending and closed here. 
It's just contradicting everything I'm saying. But for us, remember, we're doing two types of follow-up. We're doing follow-up to set the appointment and get into that first interaction, that big milestone. Our next milestone is closings and pendings. So there's really, once they're pending or closed, there's not a follow-up cadence that exists. So notice there's no appointment set, met, signed. None of that is in here. The reason we put them in pending and closed is so deal stage matches communication stage, so they clear from the segments. We don't want them to be under contract and be in the hot list, and now we're calling them the same way. We just want to be able to basically put blinders on as salespeople and do our follow-up activities because you paralysis analysis, mm -hmm. I mean, there's 100 sayings to do it. Salespeople all get, including myself, get caught up in the minutia before doing the activity that justifies not doing the activity at full level. So yeah. I really like to make our segments or smart lists, whatever you want to call them, very much predictable. So that way you just jump in, you know exactly the subset of people you're talking to, and you can just go and sprint. So that's why you see the pending closed here. That's to align with the deal stages. And we'll talk to those next. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love that, man. Mm -hmm. So now let me go into deals and then I'm going to bring the two together. So deals tab, I'm very curious. I would love to do a blind, I should do a poll in FUB group. I'm quite curious how many people actually use this tab whatsoever. Um, I don't even have a guess. I would guess actually less than probably 25%. Dude, okay. way less, way yeah. less. Yeah, I don't think people are doing it, which is crazy to me. Uh, I'm not gonna show it on this one. I will say the forms, we did a call on that last year. I'd like to circle back on that because I will say that our forms make all of this very easy. If you have, if I had more than five agents, I can't imagine doing what we're doing without our, our forms backbone of kind of updating all this automatically from a form. But even if you're not, you can create deals right from the people screen. Let me go back to one of these. Right here, you hit create, you name what it is, and you can put them in any of these deals right here. It's a little bit more than just doing the stage, but once you set an appointment, you should mark it set if it's a buyer, seller, let's go to that and I'll get more into that from the deals. But you can create deals from the people screen is what I want to show there. So our pipeline, very much like CSU, it goes set, met, buyer contract means signed for us or VIP, then it's pending, then it's closed. Easy. There's only one place this can go backwards. It's a completely linear funnel. That is the differentiation between communication stages and deal stages. Communication stages are not linear. You can go from hot to cold just because, you know, you lost a job or, or income's a little less predictable. Or, you know, we went to war with Ukraine. Now you don't know if you want to buy. You might hold off with Follow-up varies. It's nonlinear. Or you went from cold, you just found out you were expecting and you just got a new promotion. So income went up. I'm hot now. I'm ready to buy. That stuff is a variable scale and it changes week over week with our customers and our clients. We know that. But you don't set met sign like that is very linear. You can't go backwards. The only time you go backwards is we went pending the deal fallout. It goes back to this stage. And now I'm finding you another one to get you pending again. It always goes forward. So for us, set met sign, pending close. Our sellers is the same, except we call it seller sign. Other than that, it's all the same. So how we layer these two together, I'm going to bring up this little graphic. It's not the prettiest thing, but I drew this for my sales team a while back. And it finally was the clicking moment for everyone to get what I was rambling about and going on and on that wasn't making sense before. Is nice. this big enough? I see it. Yep, yep, yep. Lead set, met, signed, pending, closed. Yep. So you'll see that arrow there. It's a, it's a, it's a directional arrow. It's not going back and forth. You're going from lead to set to met to sign, pending, and then close. Mm -hmm. Now, both of them start as a lead, but this journey goes really two ways, as I was saying there before. You can kind of go up and down the scale and slide left to right. So where this really comes into play and we're doing pipeline, that our biggest deficit, I should start there, why this even became an obsession for me is everyone was treating everyone the same. And they were doing follow-up the same. I was like, hey, I'm not getting any deals. I'm not getting any deals. And I'm like looking at their segments. They're all cleared out. They're doing a great job. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, why do you not see the opportunity? To me, I'm looking at their warm pipeline. Their warms were, I mean, I think they had 80 people in warm. No, more. it was a couple hundred in warm. And I was like, well, there's your people. And I was like, well, this person's not doing this. This person's not answering this. I was like, well, which of these people have you met with? I don't know. And as I, I mean, for me, I used to go into CSU. I'd go to my met circle. I'd click the circle. And I can kind of show what that looks like. Then I'll back back into FUB here.
So I used to have like this, I'd say, okay, who did I meet with so far this year? Right. And I'd say, who did I meet with? And I'd go to this circle and I'd click, let me go to a smaller scope. That's pretty ridiculous. Let's go to like click group. Put on my agents here. So if anyone that uses C, so you're always looking at these dials saying, how am I doing? So this is the exact same thing as my deals pipeline. This is buyers, this is sellers. I would go click in the 15, I'd say, okay, sort by that. And I'd meet with the salesperson, I'd say, well, of your 15 meetings, you signed two of these people, you closed one, and then the other 12 here, you've met, what's going on? But when I'm in CSU, I can't see, are they hot? Are they warm? Are they cold? Like, I, I can't really have a product. We have to do an analysis and forensics on every single one of these to figure out where are they at now. So by tracking deals, both in CSU and in FUB, now we're able to overlay these two and start to really see what's going on. So let me go to the people screen and let's create a little segment together. And I'll be honest, we're at maybe 60 days in of having deals in FUB where it can come to the smart list. So we're still building out a lot of our smart list to figure out how do we want to use these best. So I'm very excited to see from the community how people intertwine these two to build better smart lists because we're at the very beginning. First, we had to build it, and then we waited for FUB to put deal stages here. So you'll see deal stage right here. I want to include all my buyer appointments met. And you know what? Let's also include my buyer's contracts those are high intent people. And then when you go to stage, you see this list right now is 876 people. But if I go and drum it down to, I only really want to look at my warms, my mid funnel. Well, that dropped it down to 232. So now everyone in this list are people I've met with. I have a VIP with, which our VIP is a buyer broker. You get a moving truck, free, you know, home warranty, stuff like that. It's our USP for our buyers. And then sorting it by deal stage, now, when you're doing this call list and you're zeroing out, you're going, hey, I'm going to do it. And obviously, you should do probably a last communication, you know, sort by that. But no matter what, I know the people I'm talking to this, I should be having conversations about, hey, because they're that middle ground. Are you looking for the right property? Is, is anything going on? Because what we don't do enough, at least on our team, and I don't know if you guys have seen this well, we don't upgrade and downgrade communication stages near enough. A lot of it goes from hot to... It goes from cold to transaction, warm to transaction, but we're really not going cold, warm, hot transaction or hot, warm, cold, warm, hot. Like we're not moving those communication stages near enough. At least we weren't. And so this allows for a different type of follow-up saying, hey, call the people you've met with in the last, you know, three months or met with in the last two months, whatever it is, where are they at now? And make sure that you're moving their communication stages because you might call through half this list and realize, oh, you know what? I just talked to Tawanda here. Their motivation just got pushed super far out. I need to downgrade them to cold. Now I need to, because you're really doing the work to make sure that your segments during the normal day-to-day -day are staying clean in their movement. Because if you're doing the one through seven list I just showed you guys, if you're never updating those communication stages, you're really doing the same cadence. And what we found is a lot of our cold, especially, and some of our warm, we were finally doing that next call and it was like, oh, I already transacted. I already bought. I already did this. And it's like, okay, well, they told me it was, it was nine months out. When we sat in that meeting, they, I knew they were that far out. So I didn't have another call set for three months based on that stage. And you lost them. So this yeah. for us became a monthly audit of looking through all your Mets and saying, hey, regardless of the quarterly touch you're going to do, check-ins for those people you've met. Now, people you haven't met, if they said their quarterly calls and their motivation is low, don't call them once a month. That'd be ridiculous. But yep. someone that says they're cold or you perceive their motivation to be cold and you've met before, maybe we change the rules for those people. And maybe for those people, before I go to do those calls, I prep a lot of off-market properties to talk about, or I really prep a content narrative in my head the same way you would for this podcast or you would for a post. For all the people I've met, mortgage rates are going up, interest rates are going up. I'm going to talk to all my warms and letting them know, hey, shit or get off the pot because interest rates are going up. This is how it affects you. Now I can have a very purposeful conversation with this subset of group that if I just called all my warms, people that I have met and I haven't met, the conversation might not apply. So I'm having to be a lot more nimble in those conversations and I can't just focus on one objective. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, yeah dude, hundred percent. I don't think a lot of people look through the process of downgrading their contacts. They just upgrade them all the time and then they get stuck. And then, and then when they're looking at their database, they don't even know who to call anymore. And if you believe, and you know better than anyone as the user, that your database, like if I'm sitting and tapping with an agent meeting and they're like, oh, this person's that, that's not real. Like they'll say, stay, oh, that's not real. We did that. Why are you not changing it then? Because otherwise you're just programming the system to give you garbage and you won't believe in it. So you won't use it and you won't buy into it. But if you bought into it, the way you knew every time you logged into Facebook, it would go exactly the same, it would give you the feed that you wanted. Like you could just blindly go in and get, you know, happiness and, and get fulfillment from what you're trying to do. I think a lot more salespeople would buy into using their segments in a regular basis, the way uh, it's intended to be used. I agree, man. I agree. So it's like anything. I think like, uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, there's always, for us, I, I'll use a specific example. There's always this a little annoying thing that probably takes two to five minutes of your time that you perpetually put off. And then there's a bunch of little things like that that just don't get attention. For me, it's like we have a Google Home set up and we, when we first set it up, we, uh, we put the lights on a certain timer at 6.30, we wanted to dim. Thought that'd be a good idea. It's been like that for nine months and we both hate it. We haven't updated it. We haven't changed the setting, but it makes me like the smart home technology a lot less, but it's my fault. I just haven't updated my experience. That's my little thing. But in the same way, when you're doing follow-up in your segments, if you know what's in there is garbage and it's not being moved, there's no amount of coaching. There's no amount of help. It's just garbage in, garbage out. You don't believe in it because you know it's faulty. So for us, deals has become the other layer of this to let me at least triage smaller groups of it to give more relevant content, to have more relevant follow-up and keep everything a lot cleaner. Dude, exactly. All right. Anything else you want to add? Oh, by the way, somebody asked, they don't have an archive stage. Go to stages under admin and then just add it there. You can add a stage. There. Yeah, I should say that. Yeah. For admin, yeah. if you want to implement this stuff uh, for stages, right Those here. stages and then add a stage at the top right. Yeah. There yep. you go. And you edit any of your existing ones. You can move them around in the order, how they show up in the list, which is nice. And then deals, it's kind of a hidden feature. I'll show you real quick. Different pipelines for different things. So we have an outbound referrals. Ignore this is for some techie stuff, but outbound referrals is another pipeline. So someone can be an outbound referral and also have a buy side transaction simultaneously. So one client can have multiple deals and multiple pipelines. So that's another layer of this. If you're selling three houses, your motivation, your timeline on one house might be soon. Your timeline on the other house might be far. Deal stages help you solve that complexity. You can have Very true. deals. You can have one communication stage. And there are companies out there that like want you to use these, like Zillow is a good example of it. Any portal you look at, OpCity, Fast Expert, uh, Home Life, they all want status updates on this. Did you contact the person and now what's happening? If you make your deals or your communication stages map this, you're not following up. You're, it's all transactional and it's a report system at the end of the day. It's no better than the Premier Agent app. It's exactly that. So having these layers allow you to do that. For creating these different pipelines, you have this little cog wheel. This is how you add a specific pipeline to create it initially. And then if you want to add stages to it, you'll hear this add stage button. You can make it a color and then you name it. And then they drag and drop to go in different orders uh, yep. right there. Yeah, a lot of this is also on, since you're on here, Chris, if okay. you want to show where people would go to find Follow Up Boss 101 on the top right you know, where the my question mark works at FUB now. She talks about it all the time. And I'm like, go to, the, I don't even know where go to the little question mark. And then you see there, go to follow boss Academy. Bam. And then there you'll have uh, go to home on the top left. And there you go. And then you'll, once you click on home, you'll have lots of uh, follow up boss 101 right there on the left. Oh, this is cool. I haven't even peeked, peeked at this yet. Yeah, dude. We're going to, we're going to revamp it. So revamp it. I did probably like 60% of it, but I have Brian Curtis on there. I have a few other people, so I'm going to need your help. We're going to do some stage work on there. So absolutely. I would love to. We'll have you on there as well. All right. Anything else we missed? Mark, Chris, anything else you want to touch on? That's good. <laughs> if there's any questions you guys have about that, happy to answer. Uh, but yeah, that's what I want to really get out today is I think if everyone takes this approach, <laughs> to follow up and any CRM, I don't care. But if you start to think about those two, then it's, uh, you just put the dial over the two, line them up together and, uh, and you're good to go. It's, it's triaged follow-up, which then makes the clients that you're working with, you just seem like more of a rock star. You're having the right conversations with the right people at the right time. 
which is sales 101. That's very the true. Best salespeople have the right conversations with the right people at the right time. That That's allows it, you to do that. All right. So post that awesome graphic that you had or the outline into mm -hmm. the community and follow up boss and people will love you even more there. So <laughs> thank you for that. I will absolutely, uh, absolutely post that. And guys, this is recorded. It's going to the follow up boss YouTube channel. So go on there. It will be there by tomorrow. We just have to edit the front and the, the back. We should be fine. And if you want to get a hold of Chris van der Vock, where do we go, Chris? Uh, you know, my social presence is absolutely pathetic right now, which I, I realize <laughs> as I, uh, I, anyway, different rant, different day. Uh, Facebook, honestly, that's where I'm the most active. Facebook and Instagram, uh, Chris Vandervock uh, on Facebook, and then Chris underscore Vandervock on Instagram. Uh, I will be better at posting and engaging more, um, getting into this role in operations with uh, Kyle's the social whiz. So I haven't had a need to fulfill that role too much for the company to get us where we're at. But you know, I've met a lot of great people, uh, especially at the five event last week that, uh, having that community of people to interact with, and then it gets, it selfishly gives me a lot more ideas from working with great people. So it's a win-win. I love that. I love that. And by the way, it's the follow up boss success community. We have over 9,000 people on there. So find it in Facebook and then just join. We'll add you there. Mark, thanks for co-hosting this with me. Christopher, you rock, buddy. I always love having you on, man. We're always learning. I'm excited to notes. link up Thursday. I'll, uh, I'll text you after. Yeah, and, uh, dude. We're going to drink at minimum. That's right, dude. I'll see you there. Someone had asked real quick about, uh, I'll just answer that because I saw the, uh, the the total dollar amount. It's the same as Sisu is. It's right there. It's whatever you add to the deals is as much information as you're going to have. So we have it automated, but it's a great VA task to, once it goes pending, you add the transaction price so your salespeople can see the deals. We definitely advise that. Good one, dude. Good one. Thank you so much, man.